the same will be interesting to see uh, what the long term effects this uh, well uh, for now I guess we can call it a raid on on Belgorod uh, but who knows maybe it turns into uh, a prolonged case of, of occupation but uh, that uh, remains to be seen uh, another thing that is important with such operations is for the Ukrainians to convince uh, their allies in the West uh, that there is a, a point to sending more and more uh, military aid to Ukraine uh, this is also the, this entire narrative around the, the counter offensive uh, the Ukrainians have embraced it and they have publicly stated that yes we're waiting for the mud to dry up we're waiting for the final weapons uh, to uh, appear uh, some info about our plans in the so-called pentagon papers have been leaked to to the public so we need to uh, remake some of those plans but uh, don't don't worry there is a counteroffensive coming and if we look at what has been happening in in recent weeks it does seem that the ukrainians have started what is known in military tactics as uh, shaping operations when you strike uh, logistical centers you uh, uh, all of a sudden take out uh, ammunition depots uh, and you start also striking a little bit everywhere at the same time in order to confuse the enemy where the main thrust will will finally come uh, so these types of operations and this belgorod operation is, is clearly a part of this uh, grander scheme is also a way of, of showing the West that uh, we are not giving up, we have the capabilities to uh, defeat our enemies. Uh, please just make sure that uh, the uh, artillery shells will, will keep flowing. Uh, and there are many cases where uh, a country that is smaller than their opponent, once they do receive uh, the aid from large parts of the world, uh, they can keep on continuing to fight and at least uh, secure some of their crucial interests. Uh, Poland, naturally, during the po Polish-Bolshevik War of, of 1920 is, is an excellent example. Of course, they could, there could have always been more aid being sent, but um, it is undoubtedly so that the ammunition that the Poles received from, uh, from the Hungarians uh, just on the eve of, of the Battle of Warsaw uh, was really uh, very important for the outcome of, of the Battle of Warsaw. Also the French aid that was being sent uh, with uh, French advisors, French military equipment, uh, also played a very important role. Uh, another, even if slightly exaggerated in, in, in France itself, it has to be said, but uh, a young Charles de Gaulle, uh, naturally, who uh, was one of the volunteers that was fighting here in, in Poland at the time. He, he later stated that uh, the weapons were Polish, the victory was, was Polish, it was, it, it was all Polish. Uh, nevertheless, this, this support is important. Uh, also, the, um, uh, the pilots, the, the famous Kosciuszko squadron. Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> the Poles, they had a quite limited number of, of pilots. Uh, the British naturally know how it is during the Battle of Britain. They also received help from Free France, from Czechoslovak airmen and, and Polish flyers. So um, the pilots, they are uh, a rare breed uh, and they do take, as we can see with this F-16 debate that has been going on in recent uh, months, uh, it takes quite some time, time to train them and then it takes even more time for them to gain enough experience in battle to become And indeed, with the modern, uh, the modern fighter jets to actually have the infrastructure to physically support mm -hmm. them. Yes. And then you've got to do things which we probably don't think about, but you've got to equip or, 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 or the planes so that you know mm -hmm. that they're yours and not the enemies and all these sorts of things, which are, there's a lot of work goes into it. It's not just a case of, oh yes, learn how to fly this plane and off, and off you go. There, there's which is why it takes so much longer, because you've got to put in place lots of components, yeah, not just the pilot and the plane, it's everything else that goes with it. Absolutely, and here it's, uh, it's uh, very fortunate that uh, Poland, uh, Slovakia and some other NATO countries, they have access to the type of fighter jets that uh, Ukrainian pilots are used to flying. Particularly here, I got the MiG-29 fighter jets in mind, and Poland actually sent 14. Slovakia 13, Poland still has a couple of them that could be sent as well. They just, as you mentioned, need to be stripped of uh, 
uh, either some NATO equipment that has been installed in, into them since, or there needs to be uh, a green light being given by uh, those NATO countries that have provided that equipment. Uh, Adam, alas, we've been defeated by the clock in the corner of the studio, so I'm going to have to ask you to pause there, but we will pick it up next time. Alas, I've had to interrupt Adam almost in mid-sentence, but fear not, if you join us next time on Poland Daily History, as I hope you will, we'll pick up the story. In the meantime, thank you for watching.